in uh, in Korea, the situation has been kind of steady with uh, relatively high numbers. Uh, because for the last 70 days or so, we have four digit uh, cases, confirmed cases. And uh, it's uh, not uh, over 2000, but uh, we are handling between uh, 1500 to 2000 so at the moment. Um, Monday, Tuesday, the cases uh, are going down because of the number of uh, uh, tests is uh, down. But uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the number is going up. So we have uh, this up and down uh, during the week. But over 70 days or so, we have uh, four digits uh, below 2000, but that's uh, relatively high in Korean standard. We have uh, how many in total? 250,000 or so? More or less. Uh, or even less, less than 250,000. Um, death toll is uh, about the 2,000, uh, three to 400. And, uh, but uh, as I had the discussion with the Professor Yoon uh, today over lunch, I mean, uh, every year with uh, the uh, flu, we had uh, 2,000 or more deaths every year so that uh, uh, the uh, because of the mask and because of the uh, uh, precautionary uh, measures of uh, individuals, the death toll by flu has gone down. So, uh, in terms of uh, death toll, we have uh, some uh, manageable uh, number. <clears throat> but uh, but it is our... dragging and getting a bit tiring to be honest yeah that's right that's right uh, <laughs> i must uh, say also, i sometimes get a bit depressed with all this whole, all this yeah yes and uh, our project is uh, suffering from that yeah. well because uh, we have to meet and we have to discuss we have to develop new ideas and uh, we have uh, to have uh, uh, mutual comments and uh, but that all is uh, not uh, possible at the moment. And that is really very, very uh, frustrating. Um, next year, if uh, things are improving, um, uh, we originally planned to have uh, the final conference in Brussels, April. Uh, I have uh, emailed to colleagues at the VUB, Vri Universitat uh, Brussels, yeah. Uh, to have this kind of collaborative event, uh, um, April, May, June period, right? Because we have to be a little bit uh, flexible, uh, but uh, probably we have to see uh, how the things are developing, right? I think Europe is taking a quite a bold uh, strategy, right? They have uh, more or less open up countries like Denmark have lifted all restrictions. That's right, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I think mm -hmm. many of the countries, they have, um, of course, there are still things like certain, like you have to, of course, have a test first before you, 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 you fly there. But I think, um, yeah, we have started, for instance, this so-called uh, vaccinated travel lane with uh, countries like Germany. So mm. you don't have, once you're vaccinated, you don't have to go through all this quarantine and all that. So, mm. yeah, yeah, we have UK, a similar, similar yeah. regulation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sebastian? Yeah, well, well, I mean, Denmark obviously is a, is a, is an outstep, quite outstep, is an outlier somehow, right? Um, I mean, here in, in, in Germany currently, even though it's great that there is this possibility to, to fly between, to travel between Singapore and Germany now, um, realities on the ground uh, are a bit different. Um, mm. Well, first of all, on the 26th of September, there will be federal elections. So the whole discourse currently is um, trying to, to tame down the, 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 the pandemic, uh, the, the dangers, Fatigue. right? Fatigue, yeah. Slip, mm. yeah. Um, and um, at the same time, there is, we're in a fourth wave. And um, people, there, there, there are too few, there are not enough 
uh, people who are uh, who have been vaccinated so far. 62% uh, of the population um, have been vaccinated twice. Uh, that is not enough. And uh, the, the, the big question is how to, to motivate, well, how get those people, the rest, vaccinated. Uh, and um, today, now that this week, there is a huge campaign that, that, that people can get their, their jabs um, at all kinds of public places. But in the end, this is something that has to be seen in the context of the of federal elections, right? Because so um, it looks as if for Germany, it's yet we, we are, we're not yet there. Uh, and um, there's, it, it, again, this uncertainty, although we could, with the help of the vaccine, of, of the vaccines, we, we, we could, I mean, it could be far, far, far better, but it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how to how to get this those people uh, who who refuse to 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 take their jabs or who are still ignorant? I mean, it's also a question of mm. uh, different layers of society. It's a question of information. I mean, there are so many issues involved here, um, but. Um, um, politics, in a way, have, has has failed uh, in this regard as well to to motivate people. And um, yeah, yeah, there is a kind of fatigue with this uh, coronavirus, right? Mm. Um, but uh, with the vaccination in Korea, I mean, in the beginning it was uh, quite uh, slow. Uh, people had uh, some angst, right? The concern about the uh, injection, but now uh, people, uh, increasing number of uh, people want to be vaccinated. And uh, there is also incentives for the vaccinated people, right? Uh, with the uh, uh, lessening of the social distancing, thing like that. Mm -hmm. So it's giving a uh, number of incentives. And on top of that, we have uh, in uh, 10 days time, we have uh, a major um, holiday, uh, which is uh, Thanksgiving in Korean style, and uh, people would like to move, and uh, we have to see what kind of impact uh, this might have uh, afterwards as well, because uh, people are gathering, family re reunion is there, and then uh, we have to see how uh, things are developing. Uh, Charles was there, but uh, he disappeared in the from the screen. <clears throat> okay, uh, today we have uh, no presence uh, of uh, KIEP again. KIEP uh, fellows, uh, Dr. Zhou and Dr. Zhang. Uh, these two colleagues, uh, they are vaccinated today, so that <laughs> they are not able to come uh, to this meeting, and uh, they have uh, promised to uh, write a paper, uh, and uh, uh, in the November or December workshop uh, to be uh, organized by Singapore and to be assisted by Korea. Uh, they will uh, have a presentation uh, about uh, uh, their papers. So have uh, some understanding about it. And uh, uh, today we have, uh, without these two papers, we have uh, six papers in total to discuss. Um, after uh, having discussion today, uh, probably Professor Lee and me uh, who are in charge of uh, introduction and conclusion uh, in our plan have to start uh, uh, conceptualizing, designing uh, the papers. And then uh, uh, soon we have to really start uh, writing as well because uh, we uh, have some contents uh, all uh, presented and discussed uh, today and also uh, probably November, uh, December uh, workshop 
uh, that uh, is also used for this purpose as well. Charles, uh, you are there. Thank, uh, good morning. Your mic. Good morning. Microphone. I've been yeah, listening from the beginning, yeah. but on my phone, mm. so I had to switch okay. from on the computer. But nice to see all of you. Nice uh, to see you. Uh, Professor Park. Yeah. Can I ask mm. something? I just want to refresh my memory. So we have two publications. One is a special edition, and one is the yeah. edited volume. Yes. So I can't remember which is for which. The first paper that we presented. The first papers that we have uh, uh, already completed, except one paper. Uh, that is, uh, these are uh, for a special uh, edition of journal. Um, as soon as uh, the paper is uh, uh, collected, the final paper is uh, due now. Um, we have to uh, approach the. Uh, Asia Europe Channel, I will do that. Um, or even after this meeting uh, within uh, next week or so, I could approach the, uh, the uh, editor in chief uh, and then present the uh, structure and uh, some model uh, paper. And then uh, we have to have some uh, schedule of uh, this uh, special uh, edition. And then uh, these uh, papers uh, we will discuss today and uh, uh, December or November, December, we have to still decide the date on. Um, these are for uh, monograph. So have we, we, have uh, we decided, our... sorry, have we sort of uh, agree on which publisher to approach for the edited uh, for, for monograph for the book? Um, we have uh, had uh, some uh, discussion about it, and uh, we have to see uh, how it has developed. Uh, but uh, personally, I did not uh, contact yet. Uh, probably uh, somebody else. Uh, Anna, did you uh, contact somebody about? Um, no, I haven't contacted anyone. Mm. Because this time, I think we, we should have all the contributions and yeah. see uh, um, that we have a, a fairly sort of equal quality or um, uh, about, you know, that, that the text are actually of equal quality, even if they are not finalized. Because uh, yeah. um, our previous experience was that um, we got a lot of, uh, you know, quite, uh, so say, quite difficult uh, feedback uh, from, the, um, from the reviewers. Uh, when we contacted Paul Gray. Um, and I think we can actually uh, avoid at least part of that kind of feedback if we have a set of texts already. Um, and that we already ourselves have reviewed the texts. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and if we get to that stage, in that case, I can contact Paul Gray again. Okay. Um, but the, I mean, the, the reviewing, reviewers process is quite rigorous. Um, if we if we go for someone like Paul Gray, but I also have good contacts with Ed, Edward Elger, but it's the same there. I mean, they they will send out the text and the proposal to uh, at least one or two reviewers, and um, you know they would do like <laughs> with a scientific journal, mm. so they will not hold back in their criticism if they think there are things that uh, we should look at. So I think it's better to have something fairly. You know, consistent before we actually yeah. approach. So for the, the moment, publishing. we have to concentrate on working on the paper mm -hmm. and completing the paper, mm -hmm. and then uh, after completing the paper, we have to have uh, among us right uh, the review process, uh, uh, and then uh, if we are confident enough, then uh, we approach uh, the publishers. That's. Uh, uh, how we uh, could go over uh, with this uh, publication uh, thing. I'm, okay. I'm also one. I'm also wondering whether, uh, you know, in view of the pandemic and all that, whether that we have already asked for an extension of the project, knowing that things are mm. in some way were. Because I think for a lot of the networks, I think most of them ended up extending at least one or two years. Yeah. Especially. Yeah, so maybe we should already, and I think uh, from the Brussels side, I don't see any problem that uh, they would have. So it will also give us more time to to then uh, plan and, and mm. 
review our schedule? We, uh, in the center, uh, will uh, think about that, uh, and then uh, we will let you know. Uh, there was, uh, last year, there was a uh, kind of uh, inquiry uh, from the European Commission, EACA, uh, the uh, responsible uh, agency, uh, whether or not uh, we'd like to extend the project. Uh, but at the time, we thought uh, we could uh, do, uh, complete the project within the uh, duration. But uh, now we have... Uh, uh, to think about that, uh, right? Uh, we really think uh, about the strategy. Um, one of the problems uh, that was uh, that were inhibiting uh, me to extend the project was uh, uh, we have uh, uh, reserved some budget for our personnel, right? But uh, uh, when we extended the project then we have to hire people and uh, the commission does not allow it right, to extend the uh, personal costs. So that, uh, that was one problem, uh, but uh, we have to uh, check. And if that is possible, uh, because uh, we cannot travel a lot, right? And uh, some of the travel money, uh, uh, if that can be used for personnel costs, then um, probably it is advisable to extend the project uh, for one year, half of uh, one year uh, or so. Uh, I will check out that uh, and I'll let you know in due course, uh, right? I will uh, have communication with uh, Fabian, who is uh, in the EACA in charge of the Changmune and the project, okay? Um, if there is uh, no, uh, uh, nothing to discuss about the housekeeping, uh, project management uh, at this uh, stage, uh, let us start our substantive discussion, right? Uh, session one, uh, we have uh, two papers to discuss. Uh, the first paper is uh, uh, Sebastian uh, and Anna's paper about the role theory meets uh, geopolitics, implications for the EU's role in Asia and beyond. And number two is a uh, uh, paper by Powell and Pomash, uh, Driving Forces of Connectivity. Um, yeah, Sebastian and Anna, uh, could you go first? Yeah, thank you. Um, Anna, maybe I, I'll just, kick off and then we, um, well, we, we uh, present um, uh, what, we, what we think here. So we have already, I mean, we, we, we did upload um, an outline, right? Which you, yeah. which you have, uh, which you can see and which is essential what we, what we have uh, uh, conceptualized uh, so far. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is based, uh, this is based on, on, on the idea uh, that we uh, want to, to make use of, of role theory in order to, to, to analyze uh, the ongoing role change of the European Union uh, from a normative actor to a more geopolitical actor and its implications uh, for the EU as an, as an international actor. So um, uh, in how far do geopolitical concepts enter European foreign policy debate and then um, in how far can they can they explain road change and which which app um, which impact does the um, connectivity narrative have on EU foreign policy making vis-a-vis -vis Asia and also um, the, the the well and, and the Indo-Pacific um, by the way, tomorrow the Commission will present the joint communication of the new Indo-Pacific strategy, and that will also be mentioned by uh, Ursula von der Leyen during her State of the Union address in, on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Um, so, um, what we uh, what we argue is that uh, that there is a need uh, to bridge an analytical gap between role theory and geopolitics um, to describe. Uh, and explain the evolving international order and uh, the function of connectivity 
as an as an instrument uh, to to shape it. Um, for that, we we in our introduction we will first um, refer and um, elaborate on um, the the context of geopolitical change. So we we want to outline um, the the current context of of geopolitical tensions uh, that uh, that uh, has emerged primarily as a result of U.S. China uh, rivalry. And uh, again, um, for the EU, um, um, th this has uh, for the EU this is this is very important uh, because the ongoing geopolitical turn in world politics presents a challenge to its identity as a normative power, uh, and it's also a, a major foreign policy conundrum at the uh, at the same time which is related to the, the general erosion uh, of the rules-based uh, uh, system, which impacts negatively on, on uh, international trade, uh, as well as cooperation in many other um, areas. Um, so um, um, the geopolitical shifts um, do not only affect the conditions for international cooperation, but also touch the constitutive dimensions of the uh, uh, reigning order. And um, to, to the extent that constitutive rules and principles are challenged internally or from the outside, the likelihood for change, for system change will grow. And that then will put pressure uh, on the international roles of actors, uh, whether they are state or, or organizations. And uh, for those that rely on principles and rules of the current social order, such change will result in a pressure on their international role conceptions, both in the ideational dimension as well as in the conduct of uh, foreign policy. So that will then bring us uh, to, the, to the question of um, uh, the varying understandings uh, of the liberal world order. And uh, we, we will then proceed by defining different components, constitutive norms and principles, rules and practices, um, and um, examine uh, what is meant with the social order by defining the foundational relationships between actors in the system. Um, Anna, it's, it's me talking here now. Uh, however, um, I don't want to. Um, uh, will you? Do you want to, to come in as well? Otherwise, I continue, but probably. Um, I mean, it's up to I you. Started, yeah, you can continue. No, and I can no, yeah, few, well, if it's up things. to me, I, 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 I rather prefer that, that it's the two of us who. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> who, All right. who, who present, but otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I can uh, I can uh, continue on yeah. that then. Uh, yeah, yeah, because exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think as we we sort of conceptualize this paper as a conceptual and theoretical paper, we should of course also you know be, be I mean we should be able to cover all um, actors, not only the EU, uh, but also the Asian states um, that are sort of part of the connectivity uh, strategy. And if we see the connectivity strategy as a foreign policy uh, uh, device, if you like, to sort of for the EU to meet a new um, reality, the geopolitical reality, uh, we can also place that into uh, the change in world order. So I think what we want to do is to, to sort of link world theory to the ongoing discussion about uh, changes to the social order or the international social order. Uh, and what I find very interesting there is that this debate is going on uh, among uh, American scholars, uh, mainly, uh, and they always have the same, I, mean, I, I understand their perspective, but they think about China and the US and not, they are not thinking about other states organizations very much at all. And therefore, I think we can make a, uh, also a theoretical contribution by actually sort of deconstructing what these changes to the international order would mean for other actors than China and the US. 
and the EU is one, but the Asian uh, states and India and, and so on are, are other actors that are very, very uh, important here. Uh, I think we should also try to conceptualize uh, the sort of the, the security the, the security orders on a lower level than, let's say, the Pax Americana security order, looking at uh, what the EU has done in Europe and what it's trying to do uh, region east and what the South uh, Asian and East Asian states have done in their regional area. And what that also has as implications for, for the way in which the, the, the changes to the international order put pressure on the for, foreign policy orientations. Um, so I think we, we would really like to sort of catch on or latch on to this discussion about the implications of the changes to the international order much wider than only seeing it as, you know, this perennial uh, China-US rivalry, which is actually where, uh, where I see if I look at the ongoing um, debate among um, international relations scholars, that's where they are today. I think it's, it would be very interesting to sort of um, change the focus and look at other states which are taken for granted by both China and the US, but they are also parts, they are also part of the international order mm -hmm. and what they have to say and what they do is also very important. So, so I think that, that is where we could make a sort of a, a broader um, theoretical contribution. And then I think the paper should also help the special issue to have a little bit of steering, uh, a sort of conceptual steering among all the different contributions. And that's why we want to deconstruct um, you know, the constitu constitutive parts and also the procedural parts of the, uh, the reigning inst uh, international order uh, and link that up to role, the international role change. Um, and then we can mention in the paper, um, you know, a few examples from, from the countries we are studying uh, in this mm. special issue. Mm. Um, so, so I think that is really the, the ambition of the paper. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How far is uh, the paper progressed, uh, Anna and uh, Sebastian, do you think? Uh, what about the timing of the uh, completion of the draft, for instance? Time-wise. Yes, <laughs> to be specific and, uh, and, and practical. Um, if we if we if we sort of work each of each of us, I think we, we could have um, let's say a fairly complete draft maybe at the end of November. Um, mm. But that's I have several other things I also need to write. Yeah, so I. I can't dedicate myself only to this uh, paper, although I'm, yeah. I, I'm reading for other papers, I'm reading up on these, uh, you know, on the literature. And uh, so for me, it's not starting from scratch. Um, I've been, I'm being, I, I work on at least two other papers that sort of work with the same problematic, if you mm. like. So, um, yeah, so I know this paper should really be done quite quickly now, so it can have other papers, or at least That's we can right. have more coherence. Yeah. Um, and for for the for the uh, sorry for the monograph, of course, for the uh, for the book, uh, is very important. Yeah, but if, I, uh, I, the paper yeah. can be done uh, until the end of uh, November, for instance. Mm. Then probably we could have uh, our uh, another workshop in December. Uh, to discuss the paper mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, have uh, uh, also to use uh, that paper for writing uh, other papers as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could be very uh, timely if uh, we can have the final draft until the end of uh, November, if uh, mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, I'm very aware of that. Yeah. Um, and Sebastian, how does it look on your side? Well, I, I, I'm aware of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the basic concept, I think, is uh, quite well developed. And uh, uh, when reading the uh, uh, 
summary, I was uh, thinking of uh, uh, some possibility uh, of another paper uh, to, uh, because uh, the focus of uh, the European Union uh, in international relations, in international approaches um, has changed, right? And uh, how this has uh, impacted uh, the EU's approach towards Asia. I mean, uh, starting from uh, 1994, new Asia strategy, uh, the upgraded version in 2001, and they had the security paper, uh, they had the global euro paper, and then the geopolitics, right? Uh, and also, as Sebastian mentioned, uh, tomorrow when von der Leyen presents uh, this uh, Indo-Pacific uh, uh, strategy or so, then probably uh, another paper focusing just uh, on uh, changing EU's approach towards Asia uh, with this uh, reflected. Well, it, that was my initial idea uh, to have to do this uh, another paper. Uh, maybe uh, if I have time, I could do that or in cooperation with somebody else in Korea. Uh, would it be a good idea, uh, Anna and Sebastian? Uh, do you think uh, it could be a good idea based, based on conceptually uh, based on your paper, but uh, uh, to see how of uh, the European Union has uh, been uh, kind of uh, uh, modernizing mm. and uh, upscaling uh, its uh, strategy towards uh, Asia. So from mm. mid 1990s. Mm. I mean, in, in principle, I think it would be a very interesting paper. I, I, I have um, an, an, a little bit another issue of or let's say uh, balance and division of, uh, of sort of substance among the mm. chapters in the book. And that, that's the paper that Charles and I um, uh, are going to write, which is about the EU. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and there we'll, uh, we, we'll try to combine growth theory with, it, with this idea of leadership and see how mm. far we can get uh, with that. But that, there are still the empirical focus is on the, on the EU. Uh, whereas uh, this paper with Sebastian, I, I, it's much more, let's say, uh, theoretical and conceptual. Conceptual, paper. yes, mm. yes. So, but wouldn't it be interesting to see also from the other side to turn the perspective? How do the Asian countries, um, you know, understand the EU's sort of change mm. of approach mm -hmm. or the evolution of the of, of the EU's? Um, let's say, policy towards mm. Asia and Asian states. Mm. And maybe in some ways also bring up this, uh, you know, that on the political, geopolitical level, the, the focus is so much on China that we might miss a lot of other very, very important, That's right. you, know, yeah. mm. you know, dimensions and relationships. And I think that could be a paper in itself. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and this is, I mean, but this is what we what we are witnessing right now. I mean, for for all over those those decades, uh, it was China that was mainly driving the EU's interest in uh, in, 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 in 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 or the new interest in Asia. Uh, now those like-minded parts, as they are called. Uh, Come very much, uh, very much come to the fore. Uh, Japan, um, ASEAN, India, uh, uh, the the role the role of South Korea. Um, so sure, um, if not to say in a way Taiwan even comes up. Uh, so um, 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 that 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 makes an interesting uh, an interesting contribution for sure. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Let's see uh, how uh, the idea can be further developed. Uh, colleagues, uh, do you have any further comments? Uh, well, I have one suggestion. Uh, actually, we have introduction and conclusion, but uh, the session one is actually the giving the whole framework of, of this uh, project. 
And vis-a-vis uh, -vis our first paper, which needs to be published uh, as a journal paper, this is a book draft. So uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering how to set a, an, an overall tone of the chapters. It will be rigorous as journal article, or will it be a little bit kind of easier to read, uh, less compact and less theoretical, but uh, can uh, give a message to a broader audience. Mm. So in, in which case, uh, in which case the, the very first chapter uh, will be nicer if we can address some, some several, several kind of uh, introductory, well, theoretical approaches, some overview of different theoretical angle to look at the connectivity and EU Asia relations. So we can be a little bit reader friendly and give somewhat broader kind of platform on which we can have uh, the diverse discussion. Was I am was I think the, the, the role theory is, is it will surely be uh, the very relevant one, but uh, well, if it's a journal article, then definitely you should go in, in this mm -hmm. way. In case of book draft, why don't we have a, a bit kind of more open theoretical kind of introduction to the readers? We, well, this time we have to care more about the reader than the reviewers. <laughs> so well, that mm -hmm. was my uh, suggestion. That's a good point. Uh, what about uh, your opinion? Well, what do you think about that? So this is by Jesu. You're asking is Sebastian and me? No, uh, everybody, um, everybody. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he was uh, talking about the uh, mm -hmm. uh, rigorosity of the paper uh, as a journal article uh, in comparison to uh, chapter book chapters. So book uh, should have uh, some kind of uh, uh, some degree of uh, uh, readability as well, right? The readability and rigorosity, how to reconcile the two. Uh, and uh, at what level we have to set the quality of uh, each chapter. Uh, there was uh, probably Professor uh, Lee's uh, Jason's uh, uh, raise of uh, question. I mean, in a way, uh, when we talk about um, the theoretical um, spectrum, um, I mean, we, 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 we do um, aim at, uh, I mean, we, we bring in this notion of geopolitics that is a, a, a far more realist, um, that, that is a realist based uh, 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 understanding of international politics and uh, political economy. Um, and um, want to discuss this uh, in the context of, 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 of role theory. So what we could try, uh, Anna, um, what do you think is to, to, to um, hmm. Yeah, well, to, to refer uh, to, to different theoretical approaches um, more explicitly. However, we would do that anyway. I, I mean, we, you, I understand that, that, that there is a question whether we come up with a role theoretical, hardcore role theoretical article and, and, and thereby miss many other uh, aspects of, of, of international um, of the interpretation of the international system, right? If I is this what what your core uh, question was about? Um. Well, actually, uh, my uh, my comment can be uh, can be interpreted translated also in this way. Uh, well, the role theory will be will certainly be a relevant one. But if we can have a few more theoretical angle uh, yeah, to look yeah, at yeah. this issue, then it will be fine. So uh, I guess the easiest way is any anyway, you will have a literature review part. So 
uh, if you, in a sense, paraphrase literature review a little bit into a, a kind of like theoretical framework to look at these issues, well, and, and then you can highlight role theory. But but it, it, it is just just my 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 my, my suggestion. But mm. well, and any anyway anyway, I'm I'm pretty sure that you will ha have a fabulous yeah literature review and, and those literature reviews can can easily be kind of framed to some kind of theoretical framework. I mean, my suggestion in that case would be to try to theorize the context of uh, a geopolitical shift. Because mm -hmm. when you do that, of course, then you would start in a realist, uh, sort of mm -hmm. with realist assumptions. I mean, the, the world is a this balance of power and, and so on, but you would very quickly have to address its implications on, for instance, uh, the multilateral system, the rule-based uh, international system, which is much more uh, neoliberal institutionalism. Uh, otherwise, we can't understand what the implications would be for international organizations or international regimes and so on. And then we can have the more uh, sort of liberal constitution um, I mean, the liberal uh, uh, const constitutional point of view, where we can look at the world order, because what is very interesting is that um, you, you can combine the world order literature, which goes more towards the sort of, uh, you know, more towards um, so social constructivism, and, but you can very easily link that to realistic assumptions because even uh, I mean even if we look at this sort of um, and there we can find a very easy link over to role theory I mean you can just look at Hosty's original article about uh, states uh, foreign policy and which kind of international roles they play and you will see that it's based on a hierarchical order and hierarchical order in itself is actually a power-based order it's just that he meant that uh, other things than just military might was important. So, so there is a very nice way of understanding, sort of theor uh, theorizing the shift um, towards a more geopolitical world order, if you like, uh, by maybe not reviewing different kinds of, of theories, but reviewing the implications of that shift through the per perspective of different theories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we can easily end up in some sort of a summing up what does this mean for um, international roles of, of the actors that are involved and the foreign policy conduct, because in the end, that's how we link it to the connectivity strategy. So, okay. so I can mm -hmm. see how a conceptual paper like that can actually uh, um, mm -hmm. sort of make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but can... then, uh, it, it, just to finish up, then the, the, the sort of the focus, even if the way into this is, okay, the, the EU has now, and the commission has announced that the EU is more a geopolitical player, which is a, what you say, it's a, it, it, it's a statement which is incoherent in itself, which is very interesting. So that can be the way in, but then the focus will be much more on the, the change in international context. Hmm. Uh, than just the EU. So, so it's not a paper about the EU, it's a, a paper about what it means for the actors we are interested in in this, uh, in this book, um, sort of the implications of the change in um, uh, world order towards geopolitics. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, uh, any other points uh, to raise? Can we move over to uh, Powell's paper? Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Thanks. Powell, uh, the driving forces, uh, can you have some presentation? Mm, yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor Barth. <clears throat> Your paper is uh, quite uh, well developed. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, mm, there was a misunderstanding <laughs> of <laughs> what we thought. <laughs> We, we we should do uh, but uh, <clears throat> yeah we, we we uploaded to the uh, yeah, to our folder the part of the draft of, of our paper so 
uh, yes, several pages uh, of that, but it's not finished yet, and there is a lot to be done, probably. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, the, the main aim of, of the, the, the paper is to, to uh, identify and, and show the most important factors, driving forces of connectivity. Um, and then uh, to uh, show some uh, factors uh, influencing through the, the channels a certain area of uh, connectivity which is of our specialty which is economics so we are talking in the second part analytical more analytical part about the, the world economy and and uh, driving forces uh, and transmission channels uh, in, in world economy so uh, yes, we know that this is the kind of after the first article. This is the the, the second one in this introductory part. I'll say so. It should have uh, some wide approach uh, to to uh, to the issue of connectivity. But on the other hand, we have uh, our specialty, which is economics, and we would like to uh, focus. Wanted to focus on on this economic part too. So. Um, First, we we'll start with with introductory part, and we the, the, the starting point is the, the the globalization and like the change of of, uh, of thinking about that process, which can be named uh, nowadays connectivity, which is of course much more um, neutral world uh, in international liberal world order nowadays. So uh, we'll try to show that that um, um, that. Connectivity uh, is much more popular uh, nowadays uh, all over the world, actually. And uh, all actors want to do something about that. And they have some projects and then they develop that, uh, uh, that uh, activities uh, a lot. Mm, so uh, yeah, we, we should and we want to, to show uh, the definition of uh, connectivity, which is uh, which can be approached in different ways uh, by different uh, actors. Uh, so uh, we try to to show the definition, to show the um, uh, areas of, of this definition and uh, this multidimensionality of the, of the term. Uh, so this is the the, the second. Um, part of, of our uh, our article here uh, although probably it will be developed in the future uh, in order to, to get it more um, complex and more um, uh, broad I, I think um, we concentrate then on um, this multi-dimensionality so uh, of course there are different approaches to that and, and dimensions can be different and they are often called overlapping. Uh, so we are trying to identify those dimensions in different uh, different uh, definitions or so different approaches or so different uh, institutions or, or uh, authors, let's say. Uh, and then we uh, try to identify the most important uh, uh, channels and uh, also uh, factors influences. So this is kind of a general part uh, of, of the paper, uh, which is devoted to um, indicating and describing the uh, main uh, forces. Uh, you could see if you had a chance to, to, to look at this paper that uh, uh, a little bit more detailed uh, information was about, or the, the, the part of the chapter was about the uh, uh, economic um, connectivity, and we tried to uh, describe that. Uh, uh, we didn't have time to, to finish it for, for other uh, areas of, of the connectivity, so we are going to uh, develop it in, in the future. So. We inserted only some tables uh, that are not finished yet. So uh, certain points probably uh, will be add. Maybe some some points will be removed. So uh, this is uh, the work uh, we are uh, doing right now. Um, and then uh, we would like uh, to devote the, the, the let's say second part of of, of the article on. 
uh, analysis and assessment uh, of uh, main driving forces and mechanisms that uh, uh, that the function um, in, in that uh, area, which is economic activity. And uh, we prepared a few, um, uh, a few tables that show uh, the most important, in, in our uh, opinion, factors, uh, driving forces, uh, which is uh, technological progress and uh, economic growth and uh, as well trade and investment policy. By the way, there was a mistake in table seven, but I think uh, is a minor one. Uh, the title of the table should be changed in, into trade and investment policy. Uh, we think the structural changes in uh, in the economy is also this kind of factor that or driving force that influences very much uh, the economic uh, area, and um, probably we should also add here the, the transnational corporations as a as a, one of the main subject uh, entity in, in in the world economy nowadays that changing uh, that is changing. Um, uh, reality or economic reality in, in the world uh, through uh, almost all channels indicated here. So through international trade, investment and, and finance. So uh, we identified some, some uh, mechanisms here uh, in uh, each of, uh, of uh, driving forces, um, but still they need to be described in much more detail. Um, for the first uh, driving force, which is a technological progress, uh, we just put uh, the simple uh, description of, of, uh, of the situation, uh, but it also should be uh, complemented with um, some uh, data to, to, to confirm the, the, uh, our thought and, and our, uh, our results, let's say. So in general, um, yeah, the, I think this is the, the, the very, very first draft and uh, a part of, of that. And uh, I think for the moment we, we've got um, several pages, but it can be uh, longer, I think, uh, twice as much as, as it is now. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the idea uh, and uh, we, we wanted to um, to combine, uh, you know, the, 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 this consciousness that this is kind of introductory uh, chapter uh, with uh, what we are um, specializing in. So uh, this is why the, 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 the world or economic side is, is much more developed in, in, that, uh, in that chapter. So I, I think that that's all for the moment and, and we'll be more than happy to, to see your constructive comments and suggestions and yes, advice. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Bob Power. As you mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, chapter is not only for economic connectivity but also uh, you are including other aspects physical people to people and uh, other connectivities so as far as uh, this is comprehensive enough i think uh, the uh, basic uh, direction of the paper uh, is uh, quite good uh, and uh, what about uh, uh, other colleagues what do you think about uh, do you have any comments on powers I have a question, if I may. Um, so I, I'm um, I'm just interested in in uh, knowing whether it would be possible, like as an outcome of the paper, to show that you know to show some of the relative strength and weaknesses in the evolution of these kind of exchanges. So I think it's very important, for instance, uh, to see to what extent the EU's economic, in, let's say, weight in the world is diminishing. Uh, the same maybe uh, the sort of, you said people to people contact, but maybe now we see that there is increased um, exchange of people in, in, uh, in the Asia Pacific region, rather than from Europe to Asia. 
um, or from the US to, to Europe, for instance. I mean, some of these relate like comparative relationships will be very, very interesting uh, to see and then see the trend because of course the, you know, Europe is, its weight in the world is diminishing in, in very many different areas. And I think that would be a very good complement then to, uh, to sort of other discussions about uh, foreign policy and so on. Thank you, Anna, for, for your comments and suggestions. We are happy to hear that because, you know, we, we like numbers and uh, it can be done like that. You know, we, we, can, we can do it. There are some indexes and dices and we can compare them. Of course, it shouldn't be probably much more uh, elevated, you know, developed that, that much, but the comparison will be, okay, so uh, we'll, we'll try to, in, in each of the area of the connectivity, try to, to just give the, the, the basic numbers, uh, I would say, to, to show how intense this, this process is and was, so, so like a tendency in, in that, so it, it's possible. Maybe not for each area, very detailed analysis is, is uh, possible, but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we know that there is a, a lot of different approaches and indexes we can measure this connectivity, so we can choose some of them and, and just show to, to compare the, the, the regions. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, if I... So what's that? Um, I was I was wondering. Um, I mean, you you start with uh, you start off with with ASEAN, right? And then you... I have some technical problems. Um, the way how can, can you hear me now? Oh, uh, it's not, not stable. Better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now my point is um, when you refer to the main forces of connectivity, which is what you want to, what, what you do. Uh, you, you, you refer to actors and you refer to ASEAN and then you refer to ASEM, uh, which is how, how it entered the, 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 the EU-Asia um, um, relationship. Um, I think it would also be necessary to, to bring in China uh, because um, without uh, China's uh, pushing for the for the for the Belt and Road Initiative, um, the, 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 we would we would have a different uh, we would see a different uh, picture. Um, so um, um, I think in this case it's it's also it would also be interesting and 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 re important uh, to refer to to the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, although I think. It's it's very. What is really good is that you do not start off with the Belt and Road Initiative, which is the usual narrative of connectivity. So I think it's on the contrary, um, you 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 went um, uh, in, in interesting and important uh, uh, way. However, leaving China completely beside that also um, this. Uh, something. Okay, thank you, Sebastian. Uh, actually, we mentioned about this BRI, okay. the introductory, I mean, but, but uh, I think it will be advisable to uh, to put also a paragraph about that. You know, in in, in you know the, the part of the, of the, of the text when we are talking about the approach toward connectivity among different actors. So the Chinese approach is a little bit different than the ASEM approach and the Japanese mm -hmm. approach and so on. So yes, may, maybe that's that's a good idea to, to give a, a paragraph on that. Sebastian? Yeah, 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 thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> but you, you were frozen. <laughs> oh, right, okay, yeah. I mean, because obviously this is also linked to the question of, um, I mean, of the of the of the connectivity partnerships, right? And 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 the way how how the EU and Japan, for instance, cooperate with regard to 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 connectivity, right? And uh, and and also South Korea um, uh, comes in here in uh, India, uh, so um, and this is all 
um, the, the, the main reason or the force, as you call it, uh, behind this is the, 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 the thinking that, that China is, is no more, uh, that China ever a partner and a competitor, but also a rival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but yeah. You, you, you mentioned a good point that BRI is uh, very often uh, the, yeah. of the discussion. So it's uh, now in, in, in this paper, it, it's not. It's one of um, several other. Several, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm. Power, are you uh, also mentioning about uh, the political uh, dimension as well. I mean, uh, we, we have uh, economic uh, driving forces for connectivity. Yes. Things like uh, phys uh, physical infrastructure can also be regarded as a driving force from economics perspective. Uh, trade and investment we have, these uh, are kind of instrument for uh, connectivity, but economic uh, uh, driving force and uh, political driving force. Uh, are you mentioning that as well to complete the picture? Mm, actually, there is uh, the one dimension which is political and, and security one. Mm. So uh, we will mention that. Uh, probably we won't elaborate on that in, in much detail, but uh, it should be. Uh, complete you know picture of, of that so so economic uh, physical people to people political security and institutional also mm. yeah so so we will uh, it's it's not in that version of, of the draft but uh, it will be described uh, maybe not in that much details as as for economics but but we'll try uh, to do so uh, as as good as we can I have a quick idea. Somehow, somehow I saw the uh, the title of geopolitics in, in our first chapter of, of Anna and Sebastian. So, and uh, this chapter driving force and, and force coming to chapter the China EU connectivity and FTA in, in, in connectivity, well, it, it deals with, with political dimension, economic dimension. So. Somehow, um, this is my rough idea, but uh, somehow this chapter in, in the first session one uh, can incorporate the concept of geopolitics and geoeconomics of connectivity in any sense. Then uh, it will give a pretty good kind of the structure because so, uh, the, the first two chapters will deal with kind of the, the big picture more, more of an uh, overarching the, the, the theme of geopolitics and geoeconomics and we can also talk about geography kind of some some kind of the spatial kind of dimension of connectivity and even we can address the Eurasian uh, the, the grand Eurasian kind of multilateral relations or or even in the Pacific in, in to some degree and then, we can move to a more concrete discussion on, on the China factor and FTA factor in may deal with more specifically the political dimension or economic dimension. As your paper so far seems like covering quite broader range of issues. So my, I'm, I'm pushing it a little bit kind of higher to uh, make it making a, a, a more overarching one higher but also slimmer to focus on geoeconomics you mean right either geopolitics or geoeconomics or maybe both but but uh mm -hmm. but it, well it, it depends on on your expertise but uh somehow we we have the earlier chapter discussing ge geopolitics so somehow if you can make some kind of the geoeconomics and, and geo strategy then Oh, it, it will make some, well, at, at least the, uh, mm -hmm. the frame-wise, it will be a the, the wonderful structure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is it possible, uh, Anna and uh, Sebastian, to uh, adopt and accommodate uh, Jason's uh, suggestion 
uh, to uh, retitle your paper as geopolitics of connectivity, looking from a uh, theoretical perspective uh, or also uh, discussing some reality. And uh, then uh, Powell and Thomas can focus on geoeconomics of connectivity. It's uh, probably uh, my idea <laughs> further developed by <laughs> from suggestions, uh, but it's up to you, uh, Sebastian and Anna, whether it could be a good idea to do it. Well, I'm I'm a bit uh, hesitant to to uh, to jump on this um, um, because. Um, what we have in mind is 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 exactly uh, deconstruct you uh, turn. So if we can, cannot hear you well. Yeah, Sebastian, not, retake what, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think. Um, I mean, Anna and I, we, I'm sure we can, we can discuss uh, this, this, um, the idea that you have here, but to, to do a geopolitical analysis is exactly what we don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that in mind. Uh, we want to deconstruct the geopolitical understanding by 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 bringing in a role theoretical dimension. Okay. Uh, that is that is our thinking. But this does not mean that we cannot refer to each other. On the contrary, I think our, our what we aim at is that we can show how um, how how role theory can add. To, to, a, to, a, to a more nuanced understanding of the changes mm. uh, that are taking place and the shifts in the international system. So we can think of maybe we can we, we can think of a, of a um, title that that um, mm, that is we can rethink the title yeah but but I think the the, the main objective uh, that is um, Mm, that would be that would be a different paper, don't you think, Anna? What is? Mm, yeah, I I tend to agree. I think that uh, geopolitics, if we only concentrate on that, is a very realistic material materialistic uh, perspective, and uh, uh, that's not what we. I mean, like Sebastian said, said, we don't want to do that. We want to bring in also the additional identity component. Okay. Um, but I think what, what could be possible to do, I mean, because we need uh, we need some sort of links between the different chapters, is that uh, describing the context also as a uh, as a, a, a big shift in in let's say material uh, uh, facts like material uh, specificities. So we have a big shift. In, uh, in the order of magnitude and order of importance of, of the EU as an international mm. economic actor. Uh, that's one big shift. We have another one uh, when it comes to investment and we have the sort of also a more multipolar, at least from, let's say, I'm not talking from the political point of view, I'm talking about from the point of view of reality. We have a, a more multipolar world because we have uh, an Asian or Asian Pacific pole, we have an American pole, we have a European pole, and so on. And and that's something we could maybe refer to in the let's say in the in the description of the context. That's fine. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. In fact, well, that is well now now it, it looks a lot clearer. And well, so I, I totally agree. I totally agree on, on Sebastian and, and Anna's idea. And, and well, we, I'm, I'm not in, in, in any sense, well, forcing you to well, go into the geopolitics, but actually the, the, your, well, what you're saying is actually the beyond geopolitics. Well, we have to move beyond geopolitics to properly understand connectivity, well, to some degree. And because, because well, it deals with, with the multilateral identity issues, etc. So, well, 
to some degree, if somebody is arguing geopolitics and geoeconomics and, and, and somebody else can also argue deconstruction of, of the uh, traditional notion of geopolitics and, and, and geoeconomics and, and rebuilding of, of new kind of the new identity and new definition of, of, of the uh, new definition of a space in, in between Europe and, and Asia. So I, I think that uh, kind of deconstruction idea it, it, it is super, was certainly superb. In that case, I'm just wondering uh, whether the, our Polish colleague may, may focus a little bit on more on the traditional notion of geopolitics and, and geoeconomics. If then somehow, somehow you can also make make uh, some kind of the, the balance, like the, the, some some kind of the uh, some like the wider side and and somewhat like the uh, more blackish side and so well, the, the, no no I'm 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 just thinking and suggesting. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Professor Lee. Uh, as for geoeconomics, uh, I would say yes, uh, we are more familiar with with that issue than with geopolitics. Uh, so um, we could, for example, insert that that kind of geoeconomics um, in uh, description of general factors influencing the, the areas of uh, of connectivity. Uh, but I'm not sure if we are uh, able to uh, prepare a good uh, analysis of geopolitics uh, in, in, in that. We are not specialists in that. So uh, probably uh, it would be a, uh, a weak part of, of that paper. So uh, yeah. Ge Geoecon is just fine. Right answer. Yeah. I, I think Geoecon is just fine. And anyway, either constructing or deconstructing. Well, yeah, will be there in an earlier chapter. Actually, actually, we can mention about you know a, a few sentences so that it could you know complete the geoeconomics somehow. But uh, yeah, the, the frank answer is uh, we are not specialists in, in politics. That's that's true. Yeah. So yeah, we can we can do it. We can try to do to do so, uh, and we'll see uh, during our next meeting if it works. Yeah. Yeah. Very fine. Thank you. Um...